Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm answering question number five from the October, November 2021 paper one, variant one from the 9709 Pure Mathematics um, syllabus of um, Cambridge. And here we have a trig graph, the graph of y equals something related to the cosine curve a times cosine bx plus c. And we're given the sketch or the graph of that um, drawn out for us. We have the angles in terms of pi and radians. Um, and we've got to find the values of the integers which we know are positive integers a, b, and c. Okay, so what we should always do when we're starting off with this is think about what does the main the parent function look like? What does y equals cosine of x look like without any transformations whatsoever? So if I was to draw the graph of y equals cosine x or make a sketch of it, how would that look? Well, we know that it has a highest value of 1, a lowest value of minus 1, and it goes through 0, 90, 0, or pi over 2, 0 in this case, and it goes through pi minus 1 and 3 pi over 2, 0, and back to 2 pi. It gets back to uh, 1 at 2 pi. This is pi over 2. This is pi and this is 3 pi over 2. So we should know that that's how y equals cosine x looks like. Just y equals cosine x. But I'll just do something to make it. So this is y equals cosine x. Now, what's happened is it's become this graph over here. It's been transformed. And when we're doing transformations, we should always start with those which are inside the bracket, okay, inside the function. So you have changes that take place outside the function and changes that take place inside the function. So here you have a times f of x, if you called it f of x, original function, uh, plus c. So you have a times bx inside the bracket and then plus c. So we're going to start with what's inside the bracket. That is a horizontal stretch of factor 1 over b. Okay, a horizontal stretch of factor 1 over b. And we can see that, um, you know, this y equals cosine x has a period of 2 pi. Um, 2 pi, the original function. But this one has a period of 1 pi. Okay, so the period has been halved. So what we do is when it's inside the function, we do the opposite. So if I say f 1 over 2x, this means it's a horizontal stretch of factor 2. Okay, um, so this has been halved, so it's going to be f of 2x, that's a horizontal stretch of factor of a half. The period has been halved, so we have to write f of 2x. So this b is going to be equal to 2. Okay, that will make the period in half. Right, so when, when you're dealing with like f of something x, let's say f of, say, px, all right, this is a horizontal stretch of factor 1 over p, the reciprocal of p. Okay, so that's what we have to understand. So b is equal to 2. Okay, so we know that b is equal to 2, all right, because it's a um, horizontal stretch of factor 2. Okay, the period went from 2 pi to pi, Therefore, we can say that b is equal to 2. Okay, then I'm going to start. So I've started with the, the things inside that function. So we can say that we'll have y equals cosine of 2x. Now we've got to think about the stuff that is outside the function. So you have a times f of 2x plus c. So when it's outside the function, we think of things in the order of bid mass. So we think of things in the order of the order of operations multiplication before addition. So we think about this A, right? So what does this A do? The A affects the, the um, you know, it's like a vertical stretch. A is like a vertical stretch. So we can see here that the original cosine curve goes between minus 1 and 1, okay? It goes between minus 1 and 1. So the original cosine curve goes between these two values. So you can say its amplitude is equal to 2. But here, this curve 
it goes between minus 2 and 8, so its amplitude is 10. All right, so the amplitude has been multiplied by 5. It's 5 times as big. So this is going to be, A is going to be equal to 5. So we can here write Y equals 5 times cosine 2X. All right, and then what we can see is, if it, if it was just cosine of 5, if it was just 5 cosine of x, then this would be minus 5, and this would be plus 5, and this would be 10 now. But this minus 5 is now minus 2, and this 5 is now 8. So the whole curve is like it's been lifted up, okay, three spaces. It's a translation of three units upwards. So we can see that the plus c here, c has to be equal to 3. So we end up with 5 cosine 2x plus 3. So A is equal to 5, B is equal to 2, and C is equal to 3. And there's the answer to part A of this question. Okay, so we're dealing with transformations of graphs, which is kind of new in this syllabus, but something that's important. So we finished 5 part A. Now for part B, it says here, for these values of A, B, and C, so when we have uh, Y equals 5 times cosine of 2x plus c plus 3. Um, it says, use the given diagram to determine the number of solutions in the interval between 0 and 2 pi of this equation here. So we're going to solve the equation 5 cosine 2x plus 3 equals 6 over pi x. Okay, now, what we can do here, is we can we want to find where two functions intersect when 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 we have an equation like this if we draw this equation and we draw this equation on the same axis where they intersect that will tell you what the solutions are so the number of solutions will be the number of times that they intersect so this is already drawn this is the graph that's drawn already i have to draw the line y equals whatever's on the other side which is 6 over pi x how do I draw this line? Well, pi is a constant. So this is like a straight line, y equals mx, okay? And the, the y-intercept is 0. So this graph will go through 0, 0. And the gradient of this graph is 6 over pi. That means for every pi you go along, it will go up by 6. You, or you can say when x equals 1, um, when x equals, sorry, when x equals pi, y equals 6. You can say if you replace x with pi, y will be 6. So it's going to go through these two points. So if we draw a line through these two points, we can see how many times this line will cro cross through the curve between 0 and 2 pi. And we can see very clearly it's how many times? 1, 2, three times. Those are the three places where they will intersect. Okay, so therefore, we don't have to find the solutions. We have to show how many times, how many solutions there are going to be. So we can say three solutions. Okay, there's your answer to part one. And part two, you have to do the same thing. You've got to solve the equation five cosine of two x plus three is equal to six minus six over pi. So how do I draw the line y equals 6 minus 6 over pi? Well, I know that the y-intercept is equal to 6. So it's going to go through here. Okay, and the gradient is equal to this time minus 6 over pi. So again, we could do the same thing. We say when x equals, um, this is going to be uh, x here, so 6 minus 6 over pi x. When x equals pi, what's going to happen? You're going to have 6 minus 6 and the pi's will cancel out, so 0. So that means when x equals pi, y equals 0. Okay, you can also think about it, you know, it goes down 6 units for every pi it goes along. That's like the rise over the run. So it's going to go through these two points. So if I draw this line on that, just, on, just to, to illustrate on that same axis, okay, let me change the color a little bit. We'll see that that line will look something like this between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, and we can see that this cuts or you can see it uh, intersects with the axis 
oh, sorry, intersects with the curve in two places. Okay, there's only two intersections between this line and our curve, which means there are only two solutions. Now, the question did not tell us to find those solutions. It just told us to say how many solutions. So for part two, we can see, the, uh, the, see, see there are two solutions. So by making a drawing of these lines, we can see how many times they intersect the curve, and then we can write down how many solutions there are. So that concludes this question number five from the October, November 2021 Pure Mathematics 1 paper from uh, Cambridge. Other, paper, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will be linked over here at the end of this video. Other questions from trig graphs um, of P1 of Cambridge can be found in this uh, playlist over here. I will also include the playlist for my Edexcel collection of P2. In fact, it's actually P1 graphs, uh, which will be found in this link over here. And you can um, subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.